What up, peeps? This is Get With It Sports, place where you get your sports with a little swag. I'm Glass. And I'm Brandon. The best tag team tandem here in sports talk. About to give you our two cent deposit on sports episode 10. This is going to be a good episode right here. I can see, I can feel it right now. We'll be talking, of course, the, the news tape. Got a little NHL awards to give out. Um, Russia, get booed at the Rio Olympics. And of course, we have to talk about the meat and potatoes this week. We got to talk about the NBA finals, game seven between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors. With the Golden State Warriors losing a 3 1 deficit. But we'll talk about that in a minute. We're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about, as, as diehard fans, and I can speak for my partner right here, Brandon, diehard fans. Of the Chicago Bulls, they made a transaction yesterday. I didn't think they would had the balls to do it, but they did it. They shipped out Derrick Rose to the New York Knicks, as you can tell in the uh, hashtag. I got Rose MS- MSG guard. <laughs> That's where he's headed to. We're gonna talk about it. Whether we like what we got back for Derrick Rose, who had the upper hand between the New York Knicks and Chicago Bulls. But we will talk about that in a minute. First off, I just we just want to thank you guys for coming in, coming in, listen to the show, whether it's downloading it for later, uh, listen later, or you listen to us live right now, watching us on Blab. We appreciate the time. Click the follow tag, the like tag, whatever we got up. But anyway, you can follow the show live so you can interact with us with your Twitter account by going to blab i am that's blab b-l-a-b dot i am and search for get with and search for at get with the sports you can watch the show later on the youtube channel if everything works right <laughs> on the get with the sports 2 channel or you can be on the go by downloading the spreaker app that's spreaker with the r and search for get with the sports media now let's go ahead and get on with the news tape First off, we got the NHL. Uh, They set their 2016-2017 salary cap at $73 million. Uh, It has been set at $73 million with the floor of $54 million. The new cap marks marks an increase of $1.6 million, which is 2.2% from last season. It comes from the NHL PA's vote to use its 5% growth factor. The floundering Canadian dollar impacted league revenue this season, and with the expansion on the horizon, revenue should grow should continue to grow. The cap was implemented in 2005-2006 season, and at that time, the cap was 39 million. So from 2005 to right now, that's a hell of a growth. We're starting off at 39 million. Now we are at now we are at 73 million. So evidently. People are watching NHL a little bit more than usual. Wow. They're getting yeah. them dollars put up in there. And, um, hey, as so Blackhawk fans, if we was, I don't think some of us, would be, some of us uh, African-Americans would be watching it in Chicago. <laughs> but anyway, right. no shade. Congrats, congrats to NHL for raising the cap. Now these players can get more money. Ain't nothing wrong with that. What you got to say about that, bro? I'm just most most of the teams now, the reason for their revenue is because most of the teams now put their games on TV. You know, right. Like, this is one of them teams that didn't even put their games on TV for a long time. So I think that's that's a big reason for that $15 million increase also. Mm-hmm. That's huge. Yeah. And then you know what? I have to admit, when they implemented the outside games, I can't remember what they called. Classics, right? Yeah, Winter Classics. Winter Classics. Right when they start implementing that, uh, guys said games are more exciting. I have yet to make it to a Blackhawks game. I heard you got to be to a game in order to really appreciate what's going on on the ice. Uh, just a me- you know, just a, if you if people don't remember the San Jose Sharks, the Anaheim Ducks were expansion teams, right? Now it's like they was always there from the get go, so you know what. I got to give kudos to NHL. They're moving up. I don't know if they're going to surpass MLB 
You don't think so? No. Okay. Uh, hey, you never know. Never, you right. You never know. You know what I'm saying? I doubt it. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of expansion teams, NHL confirms ex the expansion to Las Vegas in the 2017-2018 season. No, right. Commissioner uh, Gary Bettman announced Wednesday that the league's Board of Governors unanimously approved expansion to the city for the 2017-2018 season, giving Las Vegas its first professional sports franchise. Bill Foley will be the principal owner of the team, which will pay its home game, which will play its home games at the recently opened T-Mobile Arena. Excuse me, T-Mobile Arena. Uh, Foley and his group will pay a five hundred million dollar expansion fee. Damn, that's a lot of money, bro. Hey, all I know is reading stuff like this. There's money out there for us to get, man. So uh, yeah. I'm just gonna put it out there. <laughs> yeah. uh, which would uh, it got a five million dollar expansion fee, which will be distributed equally among the thirty other clubs. Uh, the new franchise will play in the Western Conference Pacific Division. And there will be no other changes to the league's alignment. So kudos to the NHL. Kudos to the new team in Las Vegas. That just goes to show that the, that the league is up and coming. Uh, good move. Uh, any thoughts, bro? $500 million. $500 million. So the owners, I, which I didn't know, the owners get a piece of that. Yeah, I'm going to welcome that team, that franchise. <laughs> <laughs> right, I didn't know they did that. I didn't know. It. Yeah, come on. Wait, come on, come on. Wait, 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 wait. Let's think about this right now. Five hundred million dollar expansion fee. That's a fee. That's we ain't talking about implementing the team. Right. It's like the uh, country club. Yeah, yeah. Damn, that's a lot of money, man. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Five uh, million divided by thirty. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I ain't gonna do the math right now. I'm still stuck on the five hundred million dollars, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, once again, kudos to the uh, Las Vegas team. I would love to know what the name gonna be. I have to figure out. I was gonna ask you off off air. We gotta come up with some some gimmicky names that the Los Angeles. I mean, that the Las Vegas team. Well, they don't have they don't have a contest or something. I'm sure it's up and coming. I'm sure it's coming. Just like like that, huh? It did the thunder like that too. Right, right. I thought the thunder should be called the bisons. That was just me. The bison. thunder, yeah, the bisons. Yeah, they got a lot of them out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of NHL, let's give out the shots out to the Chicago Bucks. They came away with a couple of trophies at the uh, NHL Awards in Las Vegas. Speaking of Las Vegas, they had a. Uh, Award ceremony in Las Vegas yesterday, which is Wednesday. Uh, Patrick Kane of the Chicago Blackhawks won the Hart Trophy, becoming the first U.S.-born player in the league history to win the scoring title with 106 points. Uh, the Hart Trophy goes to the NHL's most valuable player. The Pittsburgh Penguins' Sidney Crosby came in second. So, shouts out to Patrick Kane. because He was on fire this season. Mm -hmm. They just couldn't finish off the uh, – uh, St. Louis Blues in the playoffs. But anyway, congrats to Patrick Kane. Another Blackhawks came out of there with an award is Artemi uh, uh, Panarin. I always get the name mixed up. Panarin like Panarin bread. Anyway, uh, Artemi Panarin won the Calden Trophy as the league's top rookie. Drew Doughty of the Los Angeles Kings won the Norris Trophy for, for being the top defensive man. Anzi Kapitar, hopefully I said that name right, of the Los Angeles Kings, another Kings, uh, earns the Lady Bing Trophy for combining sportsmanship and ability at the same time. Um, he won the, the trophy for combining sportsmanship and ability and at the same time winning the Selk Trophy as the league's top defensive forward. Next up is the Capitals, Brandon Holtby, who took home the Vizina Trophy for the best goaltender, Barry Tots, also of the Capitals, won the Jack Adams Award as the, as the NHL's best coach. Mm -hmm. So, man, so the two Blackhawks, two Kings, and two Capitals walked away from the trophy. So, oh. kudos to them gentlemen. 
And last, but definitely not least, the most infamous trophy out there goes to Vladimir Tarasenko of the St. Louis Blues. He is the face of hockey. The reason why I say that is because he is on the EA, EA Sports NHL 17 cover athlete. So he will be on the cover of next year's NHL 17 uh, game cover. <laughs> so, you know, when you're on that game cover, you, you're moving up. you the man. <laughs> so kudos to them gentlemen for winning them awards. Let's move on to the next subject. Um, Russian athletes are barred from the from the Rio Olympics, the global governing body for athletics. The, I, the IAAF upheld its decision to ban Russian, Russia's track and field athletes from competing at the Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. The IAAF president, Sebastian Coe, and his constituents ruled Friday that Russian athletes had not completed what was required to restore to restore global confidence in the in the athletes in the athletes involved in the country's widespread doping scandal the russian ministry presented a plea before the before the decision was made final claiming that it it had taken the proper precautions and steps to earn reinstatement and to organize organizations trust the athletes have been barred from competition for seven months for seven months since the World Doping Agency accused the Federation and government of having organized an intricate doping program. So in the recent news, I've heard of Russia, a lot of, I, I believe it was the last Olympics that we had where the Russian uh, athletes got busted. They had a, e uh, they had a ESPN story of all the, play uh, they had, I guess they had an undercover agent talking to, I, but I know I've seen a couple of female Russian athletes and they admit it, uh, really? you know, off the, you know, undisclosed mm -hmm. undercover that they was taking, uh, some type of illegal dope doping agent. So, uh, yeah, man, you got, they got busted. It's on tape. The, the world, uh, the IAAF, uh, put the smack down on the Russian. You know what? Sorry for all the play. No, of course you hate athletes to to uh, train for four years for that one opportunity, and they don't get that opportunity. Right. But if you admitted in the past that you have been doping, what makes what makes us think that you ain't doping now? So I agree with what the Olympic Committee is doing by banning Russia from all track and field uh, things in real next in the real. Uh, Olympics or the Olympics in Rio? What you think, man? What's what's with these Russians? <laughs> so, I mean, you got them. You got Anna Kornikova. Mm. You know, what I yeah, mean, yeah. What's, what's the problem with these drugs? <laughs> oh man, I have no idea. But yeah, they we break the rules. They should ban them. Yeah, I, I totally agree with uh with the World Doping Agency. Yeah, right, right. I agree. But then again, it might be a blessing in disguise because that Zika virus is no joke, man. I've I've heard wow. everything from, I'm from what speaking of that, I'm surprised a lot of countries ain't bailed out. Right. You know, other other Olympics just because of that, you got the virus and you got um the different uh conditions. Right you know, over there, you know the water and all all type of things is going on over there. So I'm surprised a lot of countries ain't bailed out. <laughs> you know what? I <clears throat> I remember I think at the beginning of the year they were saying that Rio or we're just gonna say Brazil was not ready for the Olympics. So I blame the Olympic Committee. Number one, it had you know it's all political. Ain't no if you don't show, if you don't show some cash or some 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 up front you should not be eligible to host an olympics exactly you know and okay so i i believe the president got uh what's the word i'm looking for they got kicked out of office i can't remember i can't think of the name right now what it's called but he got impeached that's what i'm looking for mm -hmm. got, she got impeached out of office you barely making ends meet when it comes to building the facilities for the olympics right. and then you got the zika virus now, people, I don't think people understand the Zika virus. You know, 
just just by saying just by what Paul Gasol is saying that you know if he go into the Olympics, he gonna freeze he gonna freeze some sperm <laughs> before he go. <laughs> if I gotta freeze some sperm, damn it, I ain't going. You know, cause yeah. you got some you got some serious birth defects. I've heard if I if I did some research a while back, a couple of months ago, that the Zika virus. If you got the Zika virus, and you, you know get a woman pregnant. The child, the child's skull could deform, where it could collapse. No, man, y'all got that going on over there. Yes. To hell with the Olympics. I'll just train another four more years until we go yeah. somewhere else, man. Just that by itself should inform the Olympic Committee. We gotta, we gotta move this somewhere yeah, else. Right. You know. So yeah. I know we just got off the train We're talking about the Olympics. That ain't even in. <laughs> In our notes, but it is what it is, man. So to Russia, you might not want to go anyway. So yeah, it, like I said, it could be a curse and a blessing at the same time. So mm. you know, hey, it is what it is. Going on to the next subject, we're going straight to the NBA. I think we're gonna stay on the NBA for the rest of the time that we have left. Uh, first off, we got the Lakers introducing Luke Walton. The Los Angeles Lakers new head coach is determined to catch up quickly as he starts his biggest project of his life. The Lakers formally introduced a 36-year-old Walton on Tuesday, 53, 53 days after they hired the Golden State assistant coach to lead their rebuilding the worst season in franchise franchise history. And if people don't understand why it took so long, 53 days, because they can't do nothing until their team, his team, which was the Golden State Warriors, mm -hmm. get booted out of the NBA postseason, which happened last Sunday on Father's Day. Uh, Walton played nine seasons and won two titles as a Lakers forward after vowing after wowing Lakers on the gym bus and general manager Mitch Kupchak in the in late April interview. Walton still completed his second season as an assistant to Steve Kerr with the Warriors, who lost game seven in the NBA finals on Sunday. Uh, with this with the sting of a loss still affecting him, Walton made the drive down to Oakland from Oakland on Monday and immediately got to work with the franchise that drafted him in 2003. The Lakers are starting from the floor after Kobe Bryant's retirement and a 17 and 65 season, but Walt sees only sees opportunity. It's, quote, I think we're in, we are in an exciting time. We have extremely talented young players. We have a ton of money to spend in free agency. We have draft picks this year. And the fact that Mitch and Jimmy and Jimmy Bus trusted me with this and being part of the, this rebuilding post Kobe era just means the world to me. Um, the Lakers have the number two pick in the draft on Thursday night, and they are expected to add Duke scorer Brandon Ingram to the young core that's already includes D'Angelo Russell, Julius Randle, and Jordan Clarkson. They've also got ample salary cap space to add several veterans in free agency. Walton Cooley, Walton Cooley led Golden State to a 19 and 0 start. They eventually stretched to 39 and 4 before Kerr returned from back problems. NBA rules require the wins to be credited to a team's head coach, even if it isn't on the bench, which means Walton will coach his first official game this fall. Russell, last year's number two pick, showed up to greet Walton and new assistant coach Brian Shaw. Russell has been working out daily. In Los Angeles, after showing his ample promise during the tumultuous, tumultuous rookie campaign, so congratulations to Luke Walton being the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to his father, who hmm. who didn't approve of him being the head coach of the Lakers. I kind of I think of that. I think in my short note, uh, sports notes rather. Uh, the other show we have here on Give It to Sports Media, I didn't agree with it either. You sitting there on high on your horse at the Golden State Warriors assistant coach, you have time to wait at least a year or two to another opportunity come, comes open. But you know, a lot of people they got their egos out there. Said they could, they think they could change the team. You know, they're gonna, he gonna bring stuff from Golden State and bring it and implement it to the Lakers. And if you guys don't know, Glass me. Is a Laker hater, official yeah. Laker hater. But as I step back and look at it, he does have a point. 
You got a nice little young nucleus with them three individuals. That said, Russell, Randall, Clarkson. They got damn near sixty million dollars in cap space, so they could bring whoever they want over there. Luke Walton is, I think, he's a quality coach. We have yet to see. Uh, but then again, Brian Shaw, I thought he was a quality coach too until he had a chance, and he straight stunk up the joint. So now he's an assistant coach. Um, they could, I mean. They said they went 17 to 65. They have nowhere else to go but up. Now, if they bring in, I think they have enough cash space to bring in two veterans, i.e., uh, DeMar DeRozan from uh, uh, the Raptors. Mm -hmm. Shoot, hell, shoot for the moon. Go try to get Kevin Durant. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hey, or go get a, uh, try to make a trade with. Um, Cavaliers and bring uh Kevin Love. They have options. They have options. They can slide up in there. But after that, like I said, step back. Luke Walton, I think he's gonna do a pretty good job. The Lakers gotta give him time to where, like I said, I always give a coach three years to implement his system into an organization. So they gotta give him time to make it cook. Jim Buss need to need to stop pulling triggers and, and cutting people off. I mean, cutting people out the out the game and let them work. Luke Walton is an ideal coach. I think he's gonna do good. What you think, bro? Well, like you said, he got he got an opportunity. I don't. Yeah, he got the opportunity because he got players and he got a bag full of money. Which <laughs> means that's all opportunity you need. You know, beautiful combination. Beautiful combination. You know. But the fact that I'm still reeling how Kobe left this team 17 and 65, you know, that's 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 on his back, you yeah. know. Right. I, I blame Kobe for that, you know. Okay. Everybody want to blame the GM or whatever, you know. Kobe, Kobe saw the hammer, and then again, you know, you can't blame him. They throwing a boatload of money at you or whatever, they know you're leaving next year or within the next two years, whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you say, okay, well, you know, take this money and let's say we can get that top free agent or whatever. They didn't do that. Mm -hmm. you know, they were so gung ho on resigning him or extending his contract. I forgot which one it was, but uh, he got the money nevertheless. Right. And, you know, the last two years, they sucked, you know, and this, this is the worst, you know, they've been in a long time. But like you said, they got a, a you know, a bag full of money and they got, you know, players, you know, good young players. Uh, I don't know how he's going to work that out. You know, some of them be telling on each other and <laughs> you know, right. all that. You know, they got a couple, you know, wrinkles they need to work out. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's, it's going to be interesting. Like you said, three years, you know, same thing over here, you know, which I guess we'll get to later with uh, Hoiberg, you know, mm -hmm. three years with the young coaches and, and we'll see. Yeah. Right. Okay, so you agree with the the Luke Walton being hired for the head coaching job for the Lakers? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, he coming off a good program, a good team, whatever. But like mm -hmm. you said, we thought Brian Shaw was a good hire too, and you know, he's yeah. still wiping that egg off his face. But exactly, you know, exactly, right. I I, you know, I still think his hands is tied too, even mm. so much that he could do, especially with Kobe still there. You know, right, right. Um, no, 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 not uh, Byron, not Byron Scott, Brian Shaw. He was coaching the Denver Nuggets. Remember a year ago, they was like in the huddle, they go one, two, three, oh, right. vacation. Yeah, so they kind of like they kind of like shot them already, banded them up out of that, right? Team. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, two things before we move on with the Lakers. Uh, I told you the nucleus, and I forgot to add. Brandon Ingram from Duke because okay. it's inevitable that they're going to get him next because Philadelphia already said they're going to pick up Ben Simmons. So he's number two pick. So that's a, that's a hell of a nucleus. You got four young players with, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be realistic. I'm going to give Brandon Ingram some time because he damn near weigh a hundred pounds. He need to get some meat. He need to get some playing time. But like I said, in that three year stretch, he should be implemented into the system that Luke Walton going to have set. That's number one. So they got a nice little young nucleus. We just got through saying they're they going to have money to spend for a veteran. My next thing was with Russell, with uh, D'Angelo Russell. And you just said, you know, uh, 
with the with the, with the scandal that he just had, you know, snitching on people. Have you seen the new Foot Locker commercial? No. That is cl- you got to see it. I don't know. You guys go to YouTube and, and put in Foot Locker commercials. The newest one they have. Uh, I can't remember. They have Carl Anthony Towns. I can't remember the other guy's name. Another rookie, and D'Angelo Russell in the room by the by the uh, by the ocean. They talking to Ben Simmons, giving Ben Simmons pointers on how to act as how to act as a rookie. Uh-huh. So they went to this. I can't remember the one guy offhand, but they asked him. He gave him his little two cents. They asked Carl Anthony Towns. He gave two cents. Then Ben Simmons said, "So D'Angelo, you got anything to put up in on this?" D'Angelo get up out the seat. Say, "You got a phone?" So he had him his phone and he threw it out the window. He said, "Believe, trust me." And sat back down. That was classic. I've heard people criticize the, the, the you know, saying that you know it was a ba- it was a bad taste. He shouldn't have done that, man. If you can't have fun, I understand everybody killed him when he did what he did. But before the simple fact that he could laugh at himself for doing some I stupid think that's, not, that's not a bad idea. That's not right. a, that's not a bad PR move. Exactly, exactly. Not a bad so. PR move. You know, whether Nick Young, him and Nick Young could get together and keep playing, we don't know. But I thought it was a great foot like a commercial. Kudos to D'Angelo Russell for for having making fun of himself, man, for yeah. his errors that he made. So yeah, I just want to put that out there, man. If you get a chance, go to the Foot Locker uh channel on YouTube and check out that commercial. It's classic, man. Cool. It was classic. All right, moving on, sticking with the NBA. The, the Milwaukee Bucks signed Jason Kidd to a three-year extension. Uh, it is reported to be valued at eight, $18 million. The team said Tuesday the agreement will keep Kidd in his position through the 2019-2020 season. Bucks owner Wes Edens says the team thinks there is no better fit to lead our young, young and talented roster. Kidd says, Kidd says the Bucks coaches still have work to do, but we're committed to the goal of building a team that consist- consistently competes for titles. He is entering the he is entering the last year of his three-year deal with the Milwaukee Bucks. Initially signed in 2014, he is 74 and 90 over his two seasons in Milwaukee, including a 41 win season and playoff appearance in 2014-2015. Kid also coached the Brooklyn Coached in Brooklyn for one season, guiding the Nets to a 44 and 38 record and a playoff appearance in 2013-2014. So kudos to Jason Kidd for getting an extension with the Milwaukee Bucks. I think he's it. He I was, it. Yeah. At first I was I was I was real suspect of him being a coach soon as he got through playing. Oh, okay. just like just like Derek Fisher. As soon as he got through playing, the New York Knicks picked him up. And, you know, of course, we all know that's a bad move. But Jason Kidd turned it, you know, made good of the situation. Uh, I was also suspect when he left the Brooklyn Nets behind the Nets back and signed with the – and forced his way to the Milwaukee Bucks. But I think it's a good fit for that for that team. You know, it's, you know that's another young, talented team full of, full of uh, promise. And I think uh, – um, Jason Kidd, he deserved the extension, and I think he got three years, he had an extra three years to get that team up and going. Right now, they look good, better than the Chicago Bulls, I and mean, we're gonna talk about it later, but it is what it is. What you think, bro? Yeah, hey, he got up out of Brooklyn real quick. He saw the writing on that wall. He- <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I like I like Milwaukee. I like the team they got. Uh they a big team. They long. Uh, they young, and you know Jason Kidd was a great player. You know Hall of Fame player, whatever. And I I think the extension is good for them, and they will you know compete in the division. They they're gonna compete for the playoff spot again this year, right. and you know the next couple of years to come. As long as he he's coached there. Uh, the crazy thing is, like you were reading earlier, uh, the the agreement with the key kid in that position for 2019-20 season. Ain't none of these jobs guaranteed no more. They'll keep paying you. They'll fire you, give you a five-year contract and pay you. I mean, fire you after two years and still just pay you the other three 
for three years. Yeah. So it's yeah. crazy with this. There's so much money and it don't really mean nothing mm. to them, you know. Uh with me and you, you know, yeah, we'll take that job. Yeah, fire oh, up. Man. We'll be the twelfth, fifteenth man on the roster. We'll be going park a lot and sweet, you know. Man. Water boy. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> but uh yeah, I, I like the move that they did and they they I guess basically what they was doing was locking them up from anybody else. Right. So that's that's pretty good. And Milwaukee gonna have a good team next year. Yeah, I totally agree. I believe that Jason Kidd and the owner of the Bucks are real good friends. That's the reason why he jumped ship from the Nets to the Bucks. I think he had heard, heard words through the grapevine that he could do that. So, like I said, I ain't, I ain't mad at the man. You know, like a, yeah, you know how the saying goes. You are, as a head coach, you are hired to be fired. So, you, all you can do is the best you can. If you get fired, you still get paid. So, right. it's, still a, it's still a plus, plus, count, you know, a plus, plus uh, situation. You know, I believe the people just get mad because the egos get involved because I got fired. You right. know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't want that. Right. But you're still going to get paid. You're, gonna, you're still going to get compensated. So, it is, you know, good thing. But like I said before, kudos to Jason Kidd. Think it's a good move, and they're gonna up and coming. I know I understand they missed the playoffs this year, but uh, I they can still make it. You know, we got the Hornets. They got the you know you got a lot of teams in the East that could they could supersede them, like the Detroit Pistons barely made it, Pacers barely made it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so good move to with the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, moving on, we got the Adidas signing Brandon Ingram. With four other projected lottery picks, I am at Adidas. Go ahead, and get, get that work in. Uh, Nike might have might have signed the projected number one pick in Ben Simmons, but Adidas is scooping up just about everybody else. Adidas signed projected second round overall pick Brandon Ingram from Duke, along with notables Jamal Murray, Dragon Bender, Chris Dunn, and Jalen Brown. All five players are projected to land within the top ten. Of the 2016 2000 uh 2016 NBA draft. So kudos to Adidas for go ahead and grabbing a couple of people at the get go. Um, I think Nike uh is the uh, uh sports apparel for the NBA. They Adidas lost it to Nike, but Adidas ain't, ain't they're not they're licking their wounds and, and keep going at it. So kudos right. to Adidas. I've never heard that before. They signed so they they signed five players from the uh from the rookie pool this season so I, I i agree with that snap what you think man yeah they 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 locking them all up man you know what i kind of like the adidas commercials and their shoes i like their shoes too you know mm -hmm. so i'm looking forward to seeing that because you know once they they lock them players up then the commercials just start rolling they just right rolling out you know right. so that's gonna be interesting and uh they still letting people know that they are they still very relevant, you know, mm -hmm. shoe game, you know, even though you know they lost the account to Nike with the jerseys, you know, right. whatever. They they still letting everybody know that they still relevant, you know. Right. And you know what? Nike is I don't think anybody gonna top Nike yeah. right now. I don't see it in the foreseeable in the foreseeable future, but I'm not mad at Under Armour. I'm not mad at Adidas. Keep on right. doing what you're doing. Make make that make that market work for itself. You know, mm -hmm. um, Under Armour. I didn't expect them to be where they are right now, but they they grabbing whoever. It's like you got Nike, and whoever Nike don't grab fast enough, Adidas gonna scoop up in there. Under Armour gonna scoop it's up just, in there. It's just enough <laughs> for everybody. It's enough money for everybody. Right. That's that's the whole thing. It's enough for everybody. Right, and just like you said, they got prominent players too. They got who they got. They have, uh, of course, Derrick Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, they just paid uh, James Harden two hundred million dollars. Um, I can't remember the other. Oh, um, Andrew Wiggins, who has an ugly shoe now. I, I, he did just pulled out the shoe during the during the NBA Finals. It it wasn't all that, bro. No. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go back to the drawing board on that one. And Damian Lillard. Damian, so yeah, right. Adidas got some nice. Uh, front runners for their for their uh low for their uh business. So, kudos to Adidas. Now let's get to the meat and potatoes on the NBA season, which just finished up on Father's Day, Sunday night. James 
LeBron James and the Cavaliers winning a thrilling NBA Finals Game 7, 93-89. LeBron James cradled the shiny gold trophy and struggled to sum up what might be his sweetest championship yet. The one, the one he is so proudly bringing home to his native Northeast Ohio, just as he promised to do when he returned to the Cavaliers two summers ago. James and his relentless, never count them out calves pulled off an improbable NBA Finals comeback, and the Cleveland and Cleveland is title town again at long last. James delivered on a vow to his home state and brought the Cavs back from the brink as they became the first team to rally from a 3-1 finals deficit, beating the defending champion Golden State Warriors 93-89 nine, uh, to on Sunday night to end a 52-year major sports championship drought in the city of Cleveland. P playing his sixth straight finals, James also single-handedly carried the Cavs back into the series and finished with 27 points, 11 assists, and 11 rebounds as the, as the Cavs gave their city its first major sports winner since the Browns won the NFL title in 1964. He also had three block shots, including a key one of the, of Andre Iguodala on the fast break in the final minutes. Kyrie Irving scores 26 points to cap his brilliant finals, including a three-pointer over Curry with 53 seconds left. Golden State might always be remembered as one of the best teams ever that could close it out, that couldn't close it out. And Draymond Green has taken it at least a good share of the blame after he sat out game five on Monday night suspended for flagrant fouls. The Cavs staved off elimination twice to force game seven back to uh, back to Oracle Arena, where the Warriors went up two zip with a pair of lopsided wins to start the series. Cleveland became just the fourth team to win the NBA Finals game seven on the road. So... Bruh, you got I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and go first, man. All right. Epic collapse for the Golden State Warriors. You just got through coming from a 3-1 deficit with the Oklahoma City Thunder, and you're gonna turn around in the NBA finals. You three one above you three and one above the Cavs, and you got two games at home. And you can't finish out, bruh. I ain't gonna. That, that's an epic collapse. Honestly, how you win seventy three games, break the record, break the Chicago Bulls record of seventy two and ten by going seventy three and nine, have a three one game lead over the Cavaliers and can't finish out. You lost three in a row to the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cleveland Cav Lebron is good. The Cavs are good. They ain't that damn good. To have them walk you down, turn you over on your stomach, and kill you. <laughs> they ain't that good, man. I don't care who. Epic collapse, number one. Number two, I don't know if anybody, if a lot of people know. I'm not superstitious, but I'm stitious. Of course, uh, uh, Steph Curry had them, had them ugly ass shoes that he came out with the Curry. The Curry two lows that was all white, and they he got blasted for it in Game Four, Game Five. And I don't mean hating on on Curry. I'm not hating on Curry, but it is what it is. Them shoes were ugly. Them type of shoes you buy at uh, <laughs> at uh, Target, and you know the shoes that you, you got to pair with the with the with the plastic clip in the middle so you don't steal them. You don't yeah. steal one at a time. That's what they look like, bro. I'm gonna go keep it real, but not even the fact of that. Clay Thompson has a shoe. I don't even think people know there's a shoe. He he got endorsed by a Chinese shoe company called Anta. They don't look bad. They look like a cross between uh Under Armour and LA Gear. Uh-huh. I know that sounds crazy. LA Gear, but they, they they halfway decent. They halfway decent, okay. you know what I'm saying? But he came out with a shoe in China before. The, the before uh, the final started called the back to back KT ones where it had the back to back back to back written on the toe and the Larry O'Brien trophy on the tongue before they even won before they even played he already had them shoes made in China and the funny thing about it I 
I never heard this before. If they had won the series and became back to back NBA China uh, NBA uh, championship, we was gonna get the shoes yeah. because they only yeah. they was only gonna make three hundred pairs and it was only gonna be show, sold in China. Huh. What the hell? What kind of marketing is that? But anyway, not to not to get. Like I said, I'm not superstitious. I'm stitious. Ain't no damn way you supposed to make no shoe, a championship shoe before you even play the championship. So that's where they would. I think that's another reason why they went wrong. They went on ahead. That's when you should. That's when you know they got. They had the egos showing their ass. Yeah, that, yeah we gonna we gonna blow by the Cavaliers. I even got my shoes made. <laughs> but uh that you know what? Kudos. To the Cleveland Cavaliers, I didn't think they was gonna be able to do it with the three-one deficit. I already had it written up. The Warriors go was oh yeah, was gonna win. yeah. You know, I think we both last episode. And yeah. I don't know if the last episode, but the two bad. previous episodes, we already said Warriors and five and Warriors and six. Right. And and the way they was blowing each other out, you know, it's like oh, this might be four. But then the Cleveland Cavaliers blew out uh right uh the Warriors. Then it got close. Now I have to admit. I thought it was going the, the series kind of sucked with all the blowouts, but the game seven was epic. It was an instant classic. They was going at it. Uh, let me ask you this. All right, let me hear your thoughts real quick before I ask you these questions. What you think about it, man? First of all, it goes back to that uh, that old old NBA saying: "You live by the three, you will die." Yep, by the three. I agree. Totally they agree. Got, they got shot cold blood on the on their stadium floor. The best three point shooting team last at least two years. You know they couldn't buy a basket. Um, I think uh, Steve. I think okay. I don't think Iguodala was nowhere near a hundred percent. I think he toughed it out. Mm -hmm. You know because. On a couple of them fast breaks, when we know we anybody who watched Golden State, watched Iguodala in his career, know on any fast break, he putting it down. Right. He, he throwing it down hard, whether he get fouled or not. It's, he finna try to dunk it on you, whether he misses it or not. Both of those, or the, especially the last one where LeBron came from behind, you know, and blocked it from the other side. Then it was another one where Iguodala uh, laid it up and missed the layup or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm whatever reason so those two those two moments in the game right there let me know that he wasn't nearly 100 percent and he gutted it out you can tell also a couple times lebron drove by him on you know it just wasn't there but you know hey it's the finals it's game seven and if i can stand up i'm playing you know mm -hmm. um i also thought Kerr should have uh pulled the trigger on Harrison Barnes, you know, he should have got him out of there. Oh, Kerr. Yeah, Steve Kerr. Okay. Yeah, should have mm -hmm. got him out, got Barnes mm -hmm. out of the game, you know, because mm -hmm. he was he was ice cold. He never got yeah. going. He took just yeah. as many shots as, as Clay and uh, Curry did, you know, mm -hmm. and they didn't shoot good, so he shot even worse, you know. <laughs> right. I put Barbosa in there. You know, just just somebody else that can just shoot or don't mind taking a a, a two instead of a three. You know, it was it was it got crazy. Yeah, it was an epic fail. And you know what? See, like you said, at the beginning of the show, you can talk about this forever. <laughs> uh, You're right. Like I said, they was up three one. Okay, mm -hmm. let's just go back and do this real quick. They was up three one. Mm -hmm. I knew. I knew when they suspended Draymond, that was that was Cleveland's blessing right there to get back in the series. Cause this, I don't care what nobody say to this moment. That series was over, mm -hmm. done. It was over when it was up three one. Draymond don't get suspended. It's the series is done. You yeah, know, they had all the momentum and everything. You know, yeah. uh, they immediately took that from Golden State when they suspended them. Okay, now boom, that momentum goes back to Cleveland. Now Cleveland mm -hmm. win that game, they got even more momentum. You know, mm -hmm. when you and I still had the show and said, so what? They still, you know, was gonna win this game in five and you know, in six, in the game six or whatever. So what? Even if they don't win it in six, yeah, they're gonna win it in seven, you know. Right. 
but they couldn't throw it in the ocean, you know. <laughs> right. The ocean. And you know what? And I counted because I this, I watched the game one rare time I was able to actually see the entire game. Mm-hmm. Uh the turnovers that they had was kind of, you know, and I heard all the conspiracy theorists and all this about, you know, and I'm I'm still that that one that guy that just refused to believe that you know these this is how it's set up to be or whatever. I just refuse to believe that. Uh but the way that game was played, it'll make you definitely gonna make you ask questions, you know. Mm. It definitely make you ask questions, you know. So, you know, hey, like you said, not taking nothing away from Cleveland because they did show up. They played, you know, they both they lined up and played. Uh LeBron did have a couple of spectacular plays. I'm not a let me say, I'm not a huge LeBron fan. I like LeBron game. Uh, so I don't. Some things about that he do on the court I don't like. Um, Kyrie Irving, he he didn't show. See, that's another thing. <laughs> we could talk all day. What Go ahead, bro. Saying? What the hell was he in the first four games? <laughs> what was he in the first four games? Right, right. He disappeared for one game, maybe two. Right. Four games. Yeah. Now all of a sudden he's scoring forty-one, and can't nobody on Golden State stay in front of him. Nobody. They, you know, this, the guy to stay in front of Kyrie ain't even been born yet. Let them, uh, <laughs> let them yeah. tell it. You know. So, hey, it was like you said, it was an epic failure. They won seventy-three and nine, just like when the Patriots went undefeated, uh, won all the games, and they lost the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. People's gonna remember, it, but nobody's gonna remember. It. You know? <laughs> right, right, so, exactly. It's okay, crazy. You know, but. Man, listen, I've heard. Uh, we work with the conspiracy theorists. Yeah, Ty, and he told me from get go, it's all rigged, man. It's all it's it's already set. The Cavaliers gonna win. I said when they was up three one. When the Warriors were up three one, he kept on saying. He kept on saying, "Man, don't go by this, man." The Cavaliers gonna come back and win. I said, "You hear what you saying, man? So you telling me they are gonna win three games in a row? Listen, Glass, I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. Right. And when it happens, don't come over here and call me a prophet. Lord and behold, dude, when they won the championship, I didn't even want to see, bro. I know <laughs> the rest of the night. I like, oh, this man go and let me have it. I, know. I mean, rightfully so. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's all rigged. It's all set up." It was fixed. I'm not gonna say that. I'm just gonna sit there and say the, nah. the referees, the referees made some mistakes. They, they really didn't make to change the factor of, of what uh, the results of the of the finals. I'm gonna go ahead and put it out there. Steve Kerr got out coached by Tyron Lou. You know when they got blown out the first two games was the first yeah the first two games they got blown the first two games. They won the, the game three. Uh, Warriors won game four. They got the three one lead. But I think Tyron Lue said, "You know what? Bump all this good, goody, good stuff. Every time y'all see Stephen Curry, bump him. Give him the elbow, nudge him, do whatever. Just, just keep, you know, just keep hitting him. I seen J.R. Smith nudge him. I seen who else nudge him? I think uh, it's a dude that don't play, but he he always thought he was dirty." Ah, uh, mm-hmm. coming off the bench. There was the uh, Devil Dover. No, 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 no. Uh, he came from Duke. Ah, uh, I can't think of it right now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Deont- Deont- uh, Deontay. I can't remember his name, but anyway, everybody was bumping him. I seen um, um, you're right. Everybody uh, bumping. I seen Tyron uh, Lou bumping. <laughs> right, coming off of Shumper. Shumper was bumping him. They was like they was like bruising them up, you know what I'm saying? And then every time I've heard LeBron, it has been quoted that every time LeBron came down came down the court, whoever was stick, whoever Stephen Curry was sticking, he would tell him give him the ball. They was gonna tie him out. They was gonna see how how conditioned he was, and evidently it worked because the man couldn't hit nothing. I think in Game Seven he went uh, he went six for nineteen shoot. Yeah. That goes to show, and he might have been hurt. You know, I've heard. You know, I seen him with ice pack on the shoulder. I've heard about yeah, his knees and all that stuff. That, you know, but 
they they took a lot. They, well, okay, well, they they had the same formula for Clay Tops. Mm, yeah, you know, Clay Thompson showed up. He had spurts. He did better than Curry. They both had but, six shots though. They both only made right shots. Right, right. You know, I just think they they was in their head after a while. Like you, like we just got to say, I know people don't believe in momentum. I believe in momentum. I don't care what the stats look like, but if you got that momentum going into the playoffs, going into the championship round, dude, you can make you can do some damage. You know, I've seen that in in full effect with the uh, in the NFL with the the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, guess my Denver Broncos. I'm like, oh, which college just said he's gonna retire? He just came back, say he's gonna retire. Um, Ray Lewis, yeah, look what happened. We rolled that momentum all the way to the championship, to the Super Bowl, you know. So, momentum is a factor as much as people want to want to uh, say it's not, but it is. Um, there was some, uh, uh, what's it, LeBron James. I, I can't knock the man for using the referees as, as his advantage with the situation when he stepped over Draymond Green. Draymond Green stepped up. I don't even think he knew what he did, but with the with the elbow, with the with the testicle files, yeah, it happened. He knew he should have been kicked out. Uh I think the situation happened with uh when um Steph Curry snapped off and threw his mouthpiece into the into the crowd. He pointed like, "Oh, you see this? You see this?" So he's manip He's a great manipulator. Yeah, manipulator. You know, he flop. He flops to do whatever. But if you're gonna let me flop and get away with it, why should I stop? So I don't even blame LeBron James for that. Not treat him as an MVP. He didn't, I agree. He did not get that respect in the finals. You know, right? Uh, you know, win or lose, he did not. Even if, even if Golden State had won the championship, I would say he still did not get the respect of an MVP. You know, right, LeBron got more respect in this finals than he did. Totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. I, you know what? Now, I know I'm going to jump off subject real quick. LeBron James, this was either going to make or break his legacy. Of course, you know it made it. He brought he he promised to bring home a championship to the to the land. He did it. I had a text war with the homies that we both know. I ain't gonna say no name. Shouts out to Jay and, and Van. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I had to had to just a, a text battle with them yesterday. They they was pro Stephen Curry, and it made they made them sound made me sound like I love LeBron James, which I'm a critic of LeBron James, but I respect I respect greatness when I see it. I give respect where respect is due. They were saying they don't understand why Stephen Curry was getting all this heat, all these memes, all this heat. After they lost the series, I said, "Bruh, you making it more personal than what it's supposed to be." He said they were saying that uh, LeBron didn't get all this. I said, "No, every time LeBron lost a championship, and he just let's not forget he went six in a row. You know what I'm saying? He lost. He was getting heat. He, I remember. I remember get, making memes, giving him some heat. So mm -hmm. my thing is this, bro. Hey, if you win it, if you win, you get all the shine. If you lose, you get all the mud. Yeah, and that's, just, that's just what they was getting." You know what I'm saying? And then they wasn't making it any better by throwing, you know, him throwing his mouthpiece, his wife Aisha tweeting that the game was rigged. Right. You was gonna get this heat if y'all lost. And y'all deserve getting heat by losing a 3-1 lead yeah. over the champs. Yeah. And he was saying, you know, ah. all right, let me ask you this. Okay. We're gonna stay with LeBron for a little bit. Does Le okay, who's sitting at the table of the top 10 of all time? Is LeBron finally sitting at that table, bro? I'm gonna put you out there. Is LeBron sitting? At I don't like. I don't rank top ten of all times. I just make a table, and y'all sitting at this table. Y'all, you can rank them however you want, but they sitting at that table is of ten. At that table, LeBron is third, LeBron sitting at that table. That's his third championship, right? Third championship, three for four. Three for four. No. Oh, what? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is hold on. I'm, I'm sorry, man. Where you at, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I I couldn't help myself. I think I'm still I'm, I'm still I battling from, from last night. I know, man. I know. You gotta ask me. Oh, slow down. <laughs> okay, my fault, bro. My fault, man. <laughs> finals. How many finals is this in a row for LeBron? Six, six in a row. Six or seven. 
Six. He has seven all together, but this is six, six and one in a row. Okay. Yeah. You said three. He's three, three and four in the finals. Yeah. One, three, lost four. Is LeBron sitting at this table? Ten, ten other greats. Is he one of them? Uh, you know what? Right offhand, yeah. Off the top of your dome, I just want to let everybody know out there. Larry coming off the top of his dome on this one. So yeah, I, I give you a pass on that. Yeah, off the top of my dome, he is. He's sitting there. He's sitting there. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. For all y'all out there, I'm gonna let y'all know I am a LeBron critic, but I'm gonna give respect where respect is due, man. This man been to six straight finals, two different teams. His first one was his second or third year in the league where they got whooped by this by the San Antonio Spurs. Um, he did. He uh, just this series, just this series. He led all both teams in all categories: shots, blocks, rebounds, steals, whatever. He led both teams in that. Last year, he put the team on his back and almost and and took Golden State Warriors to a game six. By himself, he didn't have Kyrie. He didn't have Kevin Love, but Kevin Love, I don't think he would have been affected anyway. But anyway, he didn't have Kyrie. And now my question is this: If he had Kyrie last year, would the Golden State Warriors win? That was a good question I heard. You know what I'm saying? If Kyrie Irving was toasting up uh, Stephen Curry. Yeah, but see again, then again, like I said, he was gone the first four games. Right. Right. I got you. I mean, you can you can say I guess when some people will say okay, well, um, Steph Curry was going to last two, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, maybe, you know, but right. I just can't, you know, I don't know, you know, but last year they had such an epic year, and you know what, and it's crazy because although they won seventy three games this year, I like Golden State more last year. Mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, you know, even though they statistically was better this year. And so, I, I don't know, maybe because they came from out of nowhere, you know, and everybody knew they was good, but didn't know exactly how good. And they got to the finals and they won, mm -hmm. you know, so maybe that was maybe that's part of it. But, right. uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like you say, you got to give them this respect, you know, right. to do because, you know, I, I don't, I'm not, no, you know, I ain't never called him no King James. He always was LeBron. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. I this whole ain't no, yeah, yeah. King James, I, you know, you barely, yeah. you barely make it to the table. I'm not sure they go. <laughs> okay, all right. you get there, you know. But. <laughs> all right, well, okay. Uh, like I said, I'm a LeBron critic. I went with the Warriors last year. Glad the Warriors won. I went with the Warriors this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the way LeBron does stuff. Kind of like rub me the wrong way. How he jumped team to go find some help. That rub that definitely rubbed me the wrong way. That's when I started becoming a LeBron critic for real, for real. All the flopping he was doing, you know what I'm saying? But the flopping fool this year, <laughs> right? Everything said done, bro. I'm gonna keep it real. Yes, I want you to sit back and, and, and soak the what I'm about to tell you right now. He is definitely sitting at the table of the top ten of all time right now. I even got him sitting at the fifth seat. At, at the fifth seat. At the fifth seat. I got him. I got. I, got, <laughs> I don't rank him. Like I said, he ain't, he's not going to top Jordan. I'm going to let you know that right now. He's not going to top Jordan. But I got my top five, Kareem. I mean, I'm sorry, Jordan, Kareem, Bill Russell, Magic Johnson. And he just surpassed the great Larry Bird, a.k.a. the legend. He definitely surpassed Larry Bird as a top uh, small forward. Yes. I'll give him that just because of what he do, mm. especially with his defensive speed. But look, check this out. You put him at five. Yeah. And I'm not even a fan of this cat at all. all right. Who? Oh. But I put Kobe ahead of LeBron. Oh, mm. I put Kobe ahead of LeBron. Okay, Kobe by the rings because of the rings. Because of the ring, 
And just period. Kobe is okay. He's a killer. All right. I got you. Yeah. You know what? That, good point. Good point. Good point. Because he hadn't had that killer instinct. I heard somebody say, if you had LeBron James' ability and Draymond Green's heart and killer instinct, you had Michael Jordan. I can almost get with that. Okay. I, I get with that. But I agree with you. A lot of people don't, a lot of people have Kobe down on the list, but. You make a good point. Yeah, he got that. He got. He don't need any hit. Number one, he never won any help. I think that's that's a, that's a that's a that's a hit on LeBron. Yeah. Number one, he yeah, he's passing. Kobe, he's, Kobe he's, like, look, give give me them four right there, and we gonna yeah. go do it. LeBron like gonna, Jordan, Jordan would do that. Right. Them two will do that. Yeah. LeBron gonna be like, what time your brother getting home? What? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You know. LeBron is passive aggressive to the 10th power. You know what I'm saying? He always likes to defer. But that's LeBron James. That's his if anybody think LeBron James is gonna change right now, you 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 fooling yourself. Right. LeBron James is LeBron James. He is a facilitator, he's an all-around player. He's the, he does not have that killer instinct. You're right. He's an all-around player, but yeah. um, right, he's not gonna he'll take that last shot, but he don't want to. If if somebody else can do it, then he's confident that he can do it. Okay, well, give it to Kyrie or give it to you know Kevin or whatever. Uh, but when you are in the game, you know, a crucial game or whatever, last seconds or whatever, everybody know Kobe taking that shot. Everybody mm-hmm. on the freaking planet know Jordan was taking that shot. Mm-hmm. You know, and everybody and nine times out of ten, they made it. You know, right. they made the shot. You know, with, with everybody on the team covering them because they know that's who taking the shot. You know, right. so I don't feel that. I don't feel that way about LeBron. You know. Okay. Okay. You make a good point. Right now, I still got him on fifth on my list, but you made a good point about Kobe. Good point. He got he got more rings. He got that killer instinct. He doesn't need any help. Need- Great point. Great point. I I can't knock you for that. All right, man. Moving on, I know we got to talk about Derrick Rose. We got time there, but I can't let go of LeBron. I, I they won a championship. I, I mad dude for them to stop off at Las Vegas for a couple of hours and party before they came home to Cleveland. That was that was epic right there. They stopped off us off in Las Vegas with the excess. That's a club in the I can't even remember the name of the hotel or the casino, but anyway, and party great move when they got home. This is what I call this is why I call LeBron James passive aggressive. He ain't gonna show you anything at that time, but later on, or you could call it cal- he's being uh calculating. When he got off the plane and had that ultimate warrior t-shirt on, I was done. You talking about the ultimate shots fired. That was a Mossberg pump he pulled out the trunk. Dude. I heard about that. <laughs> and people really and people really didn't get it. You know, he had a he had the ultimate warrior and he had the actual wrestler the ultimate warrior on the on the front of the t-shirt people people were focusing on the on the wrestler i said no nah, dude you gotta look they just got through playing the golden state warriors he just got through playing the ultimate warrior wow. he just, exactly yeah. he just got through playing the back-to-back mvp the unanimous mvp of this year right and that was if i have never seen a shot fire that was it what? the ultimate warrior if 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 he was all that, he would wore that to the game. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying. No, no, you can't. No, no, no. He couldn't wear that to the game, bro. I'm just saying. It was a game seven. You already got. To, you just got to say it. they already had the momentum. You didn't want to lose that momentum by wearing that at the thing and let that get to the Warriors. They would have been focused then. It was already a hell of a game. It's game seven at home. I'm already focused. I don't need a t-shirt or a hat no. or nothing. Evidently, that wasn't the case with the Golden State Warriors, bro. We just got through saying they was playing like crap. Yeah. Yeah, they need a little bit more. <laughs> they need some uh, blackboard material, bro. For real. I don't know. I'm just saying. Hey, he did. Hey, I'm. that was the best shots fired. That was, hey, that was the ultimate shots fired right yeah. there with, the, with him wearing that t-shirt. Now, we back in... This is what I I, uh, I got a question. 
Go ahead, Gabby, because I'm about to go in on the Cleveland Cavalier fans and Dan Gilbert. Go ahead. Give me yours, man. LeBron losing game seven. Mm -hmm. Do LeBron come back to Cleveland like he saw? Must stay. He had, yes. He, he if he lost game seven, yes, does he? he could not leave. No, he could not leave. He could not leave. If he left, he had to have bodyguards with him at all times. <laughs> Have to wear a bulletproof vest because you've seen, and I'm getting into what I my, my, my little rant in a minute. You've seen how they treated him when he left the first time. Right. Okay, so now you're you, saying it's, it's okay. They they will they will welcome him more to leaving now, or be more understanding of him leaving now that he done brought mm -hmm. this championship. Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay, now now it's okay, LeBron. Yes, you can go. Yeah. The job. Yeah. Job well done. You know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. they will. I, I think so. What you think? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, now nah. you got. They. I gave you your championship. I'm about right. to move on. See y'all later. I love y'all. Right. Go see what what Durant going. I'm going to go see. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, but if they didn't win this championship and he up and left, they would have burned this house down. Like I say, he would have to wear a bulletproof vest because them fools are crazy in Cleveland. And I'm go ahead lead into my rant now. It is funny how when he left the first time, these fools burning jerseys, ripping that big old witness sign on the side of the building with his hands up. You know what I'm saying? Now all of a sudden he comes back. All right, I'm put. All right, there's a, I can't remember the guy's name. He was on the Thirty for Thirty Believe Land, and he wrote a book called uh, "It's Coming: The Horror of Akron," where he just bashed. LeBron James. I mean, he got to the point where he was talking about his manhood. For real? And then in the 30 for 30, when he came back, this fool crying. That's a bunch of bitch assness right now. I'm just going to put it out there. How you going to sit there and talk about the man that when the man come back, you going to start crying? And for the, and this not going to all the Cleveland Cavalier fans. The ones that was burning the jerseys, and again, when it come to the championship parade, y'all hanging off the side of the goddamn building. Really, y'all? Users, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying. I know a a, uh, a guy who was from Ohio. I can't remember where he's from. His name is John. I ain't gonna say his whole name right? because I'm. It's irrelevant right now. I talked to him on Facebook after that because Cavaliers won. I hit him on Facebook and said, "Now y'all got y'all uh championship. How you feel? You know what he told me." Mm. And I give him respect for this. He said, F LeBron. I didn't watch one minute of the series. I said, damn. This man felt so bad. He felt so, 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 so mad about LeBron leaving. Even when he came back, even when they in the championship thing, he did not watch the game. He actually said, F LeBron. I did not watch one minute of the series. Yeah. And he was, I was, huh? Yeah, you know, so I respect that. I respect that. That's how you feel. If you, if you, I don't want you bandwagon jumping. Right. You either gonna feel one way or you're gonna feel right. another way. This doesn't go. My my bitch assness does not go to people who say who couldn't stand the, the Cavaliers even right now, and to the ones who didn't feel didn't burn jerseys or went off when he left. Right. Those are, to me, those are true fans. You know what I'm saying. So when John told me that, I was like, dude, he's now he's gonna be a fan when LeBron leave if he ever leave. But right now he was so sore about that. He's like, man, forget that. I didn't watch the series. I respect that. Right. You know what I'm <laughs> Moving on to Dan Gilbert. I wanted LeBron to win the trophy, and I did not want Dan. If you guys don't know, Dan Gilbert is the owner of the Cavaliers mm -hmm. who wrote that big ass long letter when LeBron left. Right. And did not put it down and kept it up that the whole four years he was gone. See, it's different. You know, in the letter, he said, you know, we're going to win a championship for LeBron on the championship. I'll even give him a pass when LeBron first won the championship with the Miami Heat. He put it down. Okay, kudos to LeBron, but we still da-da-da-da-da. If he would have did that after, after he won the championship, I would have been cool. But you kept it up the whole four years. You planned to keep it up until LeBron came back. Now you're going to put it back down. Bitch ass and smooth. I'm, I'm going to keep it real. Let's get with the sports. We keep it real here. Bitch ass and smooth. Now, you win a championship. I didn't want, Le I didn't want, if I was LeBron, I'd look at Dan Gilbert like, you don't touch that trophy, bro. 
That's not yours. <laughs> I don't care if you don't the team. You don't touch that trophy. That's who paying. Trust me. I don't care, man. No, nah, after you did what you said, after you what you said to me, put in that letter. Well, to let me, me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yeah, you wrote the letter. You wrote the letter. You said all that crap about me and whatever the fans, you know, if I was Frankenstein, I had to put bolts in my neck. I wasn't, you know, they was going to burn me at the stakes and all that. Right. I'm LeBron. I ain't even coming back to play in Cleveland. Mm. I'm not, but it wasn't. A, it wasn't about. See, see, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm. I don't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Right. Okay. Right. It wasn't about the city. Whatever. It wasn't about Dan Gilbert. It was about the city. He wouldn't bring something back right. to the city. Why you leave then? <laughs> he had to get. I. I I'm with you, man. You, I'm with why you, you leave the first time? Because it was about you right. the first time. Who okay? Now mm. I want me a couple of rings. Let me just go back and see because they're gonna pay me a boatload of money. Mm. And. Mm. And I can rectify all this the wrong I've done, you know, by leaving the first time, you know. And and you know, my, my wife still got family that so you know. Good point. You know, so. Because that that you can see it like this. You can see LeBron. Now, this is one of the this is one of the things that, that makes me a critic critic of LeBron. It could be a it could be a glass half full, glass half empty. He was there. Dan Gilbert didn't bring anybody to give him help the first time they made it to the finals. They didn't give him any help. You have Booby Gibson, right? Is your next in line in in uh, in help? He had to leave. He wanted to go play with his boy. You could do that. You was a free agent. You could do that. You go play with your boy. You win championships. Was it two out of four? Right. Right. Yeah, it was two out of four. Now you're looking back at home, you see that they drafted Kyrie Irving. So your last championship run when you played against the San Antonio Spurs and Dwayne Wade wasn't all that. He was hurt. He wasn't playing like, like the like the all-star player that he is. You look over at Kyrie Irving, seeing that he's balling over there. Hmm, I think this is the right time for me to go back home. Mm -hmm. That's a bitch assness move. <laughs> you shouldn't have left in the first place. I agree with you. You shouldn't have left. If you if it's all about Cleveland, you shouldn't have left. You yeah. should have went to Dan Gilbert like Dan. I don't care what because when you came back, I guess my thing is this: if you felt that way that you that Dan Gilbert wasn't gonna give you any players, you should have came up to him man to man and talked to him about that. Because when you came back, Dan Gilbert spent all types of money. He spent so much money, he took a two hundred million dollar luxury tax hit because he had too many pay, too many players over the cap. Right. He could have did that for you if you came to him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So yes, I, I'm saying there's there's a lot of bitch assness going around with this situation. But back to Dan Gilbert. When uh, I can't Dory uh, uh, ah ESPN when she entered uh, ESPN Golly, I forgot her name. But anyway, when she interviewed Dan Gilbert, said her name gonna come to me. Okay, I want to give her props. Okay, I gave her props for asking asking Dan Gilbert this question, as if to say, um, when Le LeBron left the first, when LeBron left, did you imagine him coming back doing what he's doing now, bringing a championship to the Cleveland? You know what this punk ass? Oh, I'm sorry. Nope. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep myself under control. You know what this punk said? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't hear the question, but I believe that. Uh, as if to say, you she was standing right there in front of you with a microphone. You heard what she said, man. Right, Dor D uh, Doris Burks, I think is her name. Yeah, Dor he gonna sit there and say he, he could he couldn't hear that question, but you know I give the whole credit to the team. Didn't give no shine to LeBron James. So fast forward to the parade. Dan Gilbert get on the mic to give Le LeBron James a thank you for coming back and winning championship, and LeBron gave him the. Man, he gave him the look as if to say, "Man, I forgave you, but I forgot what you did, you punk ass." Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is LeBron James came back wasn't for Dan Gilbert at all, and I don't think Dan Gilbert. To me, this is just me. This is my opinion. Dan Gilbert don't don't deserve that trophy. Cleveland deserved the trophy. Dan Gilbert. I understand. I hear what you're saying. He's paying all the money. Da, da, da. I hear all that, man. Now you sound like a plantation owner. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out there. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> you know, yeah. Anything last words to say about this championship, man? <laughs> I know I went off. I had to put it out there, man. I had to, this is hey, this is get with it sports. This is our platform. I just put it out there, bro. Oh man. <laughs> All right, man. You done? We done. Congrats, congrats to the Cleveland Cavaliers for winning their first championship in fifty-two years. Yeah, you know that it is what it is. They already got Golden State as the favorites for next year. I have to wait and see. I have to wait and see. The free agency shake out like it. exactly yeah. because they got eight free agents on that team. You know they ain't gonna sign all of them. No, baby. no, no. no they ain't gonna sign all of them. They sign the right two. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Might be Dirk Nowitzki. If they can't get Kevin Durant, they might get Dirk Nowitzki. Now, okay. At first, I would say Dirk Nowitzki is not going to leave Dallas. He's Mr. Dallas. He runs Dallas. But I just have to take. I did some research, and you know he opted out. Okay. Now, now, he's the most money though, right? Yeah, but I think he felt a certain type of way from like I said, the little research from last year. I think he felt felt a certain type of way because he was due twenty two million dollars last year. He took a hell of a pay cut where it got down to eight million dollars. Reason why he did that is for Mark Cuban to get the players that they need to be championship caliber team. Of course, you know with the DeAndre Jordan situation, he left, but. What they did was what Mark Cuban did was okay. He gave me a he gave me a hometown discount. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to pay him two twenty two million. I'm paying him eight million. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give sixteen millions to Wes Matthews. I think Dirk Dirk with you like wait a minute, bro. Wait a minute, dog. Hold up, man. I gave you a pay cut, and this is the best you could do, Wes Matthews. And you give him sixteen million of my money because let's think about it. Sixteen. Oh, no, that's 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 14 million. I'm about to say 16 and 8 is it's 22 million, right. but it's 24 million. But you get what I'm saying, right? Right, it's a pay cut, and this is the best Bart Cuban could do. And I think he felt a certain type of way, okay? So, because now don't be shot 16 million exactly, but don't be shot because of that. Dirk Nowitzki goes to Warriors to go chase that ring, he ain't heard from the money anymore. He might be trying to get one more ring before he retired. He's 38 years old. There ain't too much he could do other than shoot that fadeaway. Hey. So why not go? Why not join the Warriors? Well, you ain't got to do much but sit in that corner ain't and wait for that pass yeah. to come your way. Ain't nobody stopping from shooting. It. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, you get ready. That's the rumors I'm hearing right now. But let's go ahead and before we end the show, let's talk about our hometown Chicago Bulls. They pulled the trigger. I didn't think they had the balls to pull the trigger yesterday, but they did it. The Bulls deal rose to the Knicks as part of a five-player trade. The Bulls traded Rose to the New York Knicks as part of a deal that sends Jose Calderon, Robin Lopez, Jaron Grant to the Bulls. New York will also receive Justin Holiday and the 2017 second-round pick. Rose has been rumored to be on the Knicks radar for a while, and the deal will end the era in the point guard's hometown of Chicago. Rose was the number one pick in 2008 draft, NBA draft, and went on to be named league MVP in 2010-2011. However, injuries had curbed his out his output since. The 66 games he played this past season were the most he suited up for since the MVP campaign. In receiving a start a starting caliber center. In receiving a starting caliber center in Lopez, the deal likely also ends the era of Joaquin Noah in the Windy City, where he is an unrestricted free agent this summer. So, bro, as diehard Chicago Bulls fans, how do you feel about that situation with Rose leaving? Not leaving. I'm sorry. Rose getting traded. Well, me personally, and I'm going to say this to not just for myself, but to all Chicago Bulls fans. Mm-hmm. Derrick Rose ain't played for us since 2010. <laughs> okay. Right. Tell us how you really feel. I agree. Keep, I agree. Keep it real. Go ahead, cook, bro. Cook. He ain't played for us since 2010. Uh, this is 2016. So every year, you know, we're we waiting on to see what Derrick do. We're waiting to see what Derrick do. Derrick going to play. Derrick come back. Derrick get hurt. Derrick not 100%. percent we have been doing this, for, this song and dance for five years. So now you've handcuffed the team for five years. You had one of the best coaches in the league. 
You had some of the best players in the league on this team. For five years, they waited on you. Now, all of a sudden, head coach gone, some of your players is gone, whatever. You stepped out of the, the phone booth. You want to be Superman again. You know, okay. You say you can do it. Fine. I I wouldn't put in the time to say because you you burned me too many times, you know, I, with, with all of that or whatever. I wouldn't, even if you came, Derrick Rose came back and played close to his MV status or his MVP numbers or whatever, I still wouldn't give him wouldn't give him a max deal. You know, it'd be so incentive laden, it'd be it'd be crazy. So now let him know. So now we they like yourself. I was surprised the Bulls were able to trade him, but if there was a team that was going to do it, a suck team, it was it was the New York Knicks. They don't care about the salary cap. They don't care about none of that. Um, I mean, the luxury tax or none of that stuff. You know, they don't care about none of that. Thing about it is, they kidding them on this last year. You know, they got paying what twenty two million or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's at one time everybody was talking about okay, Carmelo coming to Chicago play with Derek. Was Derek? We all know how that was. Derek didn't even supposedly didn't didn't care too much whether Carmelo played for him or not. This is when I think Derek Rose is still standing up, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, now it ends up they playing together anyway or gonna play together anyway. It's gonna be interesting to see how that turn out. Uh, as far as what we, the Chicago Bulls, the direction they headed in, I think I, the players they got for Rose, I don't know, Jack, about them. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's a whole start start over thing. Noah should have been gone two years ago. Now that they they got freaking uh, these players and they're going in that direction, they should find a way to move uh, Gasol. You know, they going in and just just. Tear down and, and redo it now because you, you got the money, you got the salary cap, uh, you got an influx of young players coming in, and just start over. Mm. Just just start over, which you should have did two years ago. So just just start over. But I'm tired of everybody talking about. Oh, I can't believe they traded Rose. Rose ain't played for y'all since 2010. Come on now, come on, now. 2010 really. 2010, last year was the closest he even played, you know, since he's been getting hurt. So they can miss me with all that. That's my my whole take on the whole Derrick Rose thing. Bruh, that's the reason why I need you on this show, bruh. That's the reason why we partners talking about this mess. I totally agree with everything you said. Yeah. we I've not seen Derrick Rose since the MVP season. Right. This man missed damn near 70 games since then, which means he only played 30 some percent of the time he played. Yeah. I understand you blew out your knee twice. I got that. I understand it's all mental. Right. But there was times where the doctor gave you a pass and you said you're not mentally ready. You're not you're not fit to go out there. That's when but you have, but you practice for the damn team. That's when he lost. Come on, man. Yep. You got paid. Paid. Greatly by yep. the Bulls and Adidas paid you, gave you a hundred plus million dollar contract. And you're gonna sit there at the beginning of this season talking about you looking for a max contract. You're not gonna give you're not gonna give Chicago Bulls a hometown discount. Really, dude. We dealt with your ass. So I, okay, let me calm down. It's not like I'm hating on Rose, but I am hating on Rose. I love me some Derrick Rose, but with the way you treated us the last couple of years was bullshittery. Right, right. You you had Tom Thibodeau, which I think is a great coach, had him walking out because, um, but next to some people out there, he actually changed. He made sugar out of shit. You didn't have your MVP caliber player, but we made it through the we made it through the playoffs without you because of Tom Thibodeau working with what he had to work with. Now this year, this year we didn't even make it to the playoffs. Yeah, with Fred Hoiberg, and I know I give Fred, I give head coaches. Three years to implement a system, but we just came from Tom Thibodeau making it to the playoffs every year without Derrick Rose it to just, Fred Hoiberg, who has Derrick Rose not making it to the playoffs. Hey. Come on now, the writing is on the wall. And just like you said, I'm gonna put to you like this: I'm glad that the Bulls did what they did. I'm not a, I'm not. I think Paxton and Garl Foreman could do a better job, and I think they might do a better job. 
I got to see what Fred Holbrook gonna get going to bring to the table. But for him to pull the trigger, I'm glad. We ain't got to deal with Derrick Rose anymore. We ain't got to worry about him trying to get a max deal because he's going to be gone next year anyway if you're looking for a max deal. So yeah. you might as well try to get – I'm not saying Robin Lopez, uh, uh, Calderon, and and uh, uh, Horace Grant nephew is the answer to the question. Right. But it's a start. You know what I'm saying? Now we know Jimmy Butler is the, is the star of the team, rightfully so. Joe Kim Noah, I, I'm, I, I'm – you 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 impress me. I think you're gonna do all that you did for the team when you got drafted, and that sucker's here, uh, suit looking like Ark, <laughs> looking like Bozo the Clown. I'm just gonna say, but I'm glad he had the, he was the heart of the team. I'm glad yeah. you you're breaking down, and I, I'm and I'm happy for Derek. I think he's gonna have a fresh start in New York with the New York Knicks. I ain't gonna say they got the big three, but Christos Pazingas. Carmelo Anthony and Rose is a, is a nice little nucleus to work with. We got just got to see how that works. And if Joe King you know go over there, New York Knicks might have potential. But right now, I'm thinking about my hometown, my beloved Chicago Bulls. If I was, if I was, if I knew they was gonna do what they was gonna do, I was gonna put a bow tie on Derrick Rose to, and take him to the airport myself. <laughs> put him on the plane. I may even call Uber. Go and take this man over to the plane and send him to New York. So. That's how I feel. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad. I, I love me some Derrick Rose. He's a hometown kid. I see him playing. I seen him when he was playing at uh, uh, Simeon. I seen him when he was playing at Memphis. I was glad we got the number one pick that year to get him, and he right. did justice. But ever since he got injured, he just showed me a side of him where I'm not. I'm not too happy for. And when he asked, when he said he was looking for max money this year, that's when I was like over the side, like, dude, you don't deserve right. max money, and you, right. you're treating us like that. So, you know, like you said, miss me with that. So I agree with you. I'm, I'm expecting more from the Chicago Bulls. We're not done yet. You know, I want to see what y'all are going to do in the draft. Right. Uh, I want to see what free agency you could you could finally bring up a hand. That's another thing about Derrick Rose. When it was time to get the free agents like LeBron James, Dwight Howard, uh, who else was out there? I think I think I don't know if Kevin Durant was out there. When the when the when the high when the high profile free agents were out there, he he even said, "Man, that ain't my job to go out there and get free agents." Really? You don't want nobody playing with you, man. Yeah. For real? So that's how I feel about that. So you know what? Derrick Rose, happy trails. Thank you for doing what you did for the, for the Chicago Bulls. But it was just time for him to go. Just this time, you know. All right, man. I think we went over an hour right now, man. I think I'm better. We better close shop right now. Man. <laughs> we, could, we, could, we could rant for hours. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to thank everybody out there for watching and listening to the show. We appreciate it. Um, <laughs> you get you we on you get stuff like this when it comes to get with the sports, especially with the two cent deposit on sports, where we give our two cent deposit on any sports topic that's out there. So expect this every time you listen or watch this show. Once again, I want to thank everybody for taking the time listening to uh, or watching and listening to two cent deposit on sports. While you're here, go ahead and click on the follow button so you can be alerted on the all all the new episodes to the shows that we have here on get with the sports media we have this here the two cent deposit on sports where me and brandon give you what we think about the sports topics the recent sports topics we got the nfl weekly picks during the nfl season sports notes where i give you a 30 minute spiel on the, the the recent topic in sports whenever i'm not here with my boy brandon mm -hmm. now of course i got the mile high stampede podcast which is my baby because it's everything devil broncos which is my favorite nfl team check out our videos on youtube at, on our youtube channel at get with the sports 2 find us on twitter at get with the sports that's me at leb412 for my partner crime there facebook at facebook.com forward slash get with the sports check out our blog page whenever i get to it <laughs> at get with the sports that wordpress.com if you got any questions comments want to join the show want us to join your show as a guest email us at get with the sports that wordpress i mean <laughs> email us at get with the sports two that's the number two at gmail.com and for get with sports place where you get your sports with a little swag this was two cent deposit on sports i'm your boy glass and i'm brandon the best tag team tandem out here in sports talk as always be good be safe Get with it. Peace.